Mic check, mic check. During the intro, we should just eat something real snacky. Yeah. Yeah. It's five o'clock, and you're Perfect. watching Chelsea and Tony live and start submitting your photos to have a better chance of having them seen. Storytelling is a photo that tells a story. It's not just a simple portrait where it's just a face and a background and you have no idea what's going on. There are elements that tell that story. I think that sense? That's my number one tip is going to be as you have to imagine that you were not there taking the picture. You have to imagine that you're the viewer seeing the photo with fresh eyes. Does the story convey? Yeah. And that's one of the key things we're going to be looking for as well as, you know, lighting and composition and the usual types of things. Um, you can talk to us using hashtag TC live. And Justin will go through and tell us about your comments. We also have Chris here going through your comments in the live stream. And he's going to be hey, relaying Chris. your questions and your comments. So be sure to leave them. Hey, Chris. Hello. And this show is brought to you by Northrop.photo. That's us. And today we're going to be giving a 10% off coupon. And the code is signed. But it's not about the percentage off. It's about the fact that we're going to sign everything you buy or at least try obviously we can't sign an ebook but if you buy a shirt or a video series or a paperback book we're gonna sign it if you use that coupon code till when saturday saturday we don't typically sign stuff we only do it for new releases so this will be the first time we're ever signing stuff not for a new release um so you go to sdp.io store pick out whatever you want that's an actual physical item and you'll get 10 percent off and we'll sign it if you want Even the t-shirts even Buy one of our cameras. We'll sign that. I can't promise it'll be pretty on the t-shirt. That sounds like... No, just, that never turns out pretty. It sounds like a challenge, it but it will be unique. Um, great. Every week we pick a bunch of pictures. Yeah. Those are our favorite pictures. And then at the end of the show, after the show's over, you get to vote on them at sdp.io slash vote. So if you're watching late, you can go do this now. Last week's winner was Michelle Harding. Yeah. I loved this photo. We This... Speaking of storytelling, I thought this was great, a great yeah. photo. I love the expressions of both people. We both had different interpretations of what was going on. The background's not distracting, but it tells you a part of the story. I liked it a lot. Great job, Michelle. And you'll be getting a tw uh, $20 gift certificate to our store, which we were just talking about. So you can buy books or a t-shirt or uh, can put that towards our video series. And you could use the coupon code if you want to and get something signed. So congratulations, Michelle. And it'll be like a $22 gift certificate. Dang. <laughs> there you go. And next week, our theme is street, and we didn't have time to put a picture in there. But it's, it's street photography, which is not photography is. of streets. Well, people don't know what it is, because every time we do street photography, we get pictures that are completely off theme. So tell people what makes up a street photo. Just Google it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that kind it's, of day. It's not street performers or homeless people. It's not pictures of streets or just anybody in a I street. I mean, it Interesting could be. characters, storytelling. Yeah, that's what I consider to be street photography. While you're submitting your photos, we'll go over a couple of points of news. We're gonna look at your photos in just one second. There wasn't much going on. Um, Chris found this, the large sense LS911, which is a <laughs> nine by 11 inch large format. <laughs> <laughs> digital camera you're gonna have to call 911 if you buy this because your spouse is going to be angry that you spent one hundred and six thousand uh, dollars i wonder what's if they the take returns on that huh what's the crop factor on that <laughs> <laughs> it's a like a 0 0.1 or something really? i don't know what it would and be it's only the back you've got to supply the camera it's only the back yeah, exactly. It's that whole rig in the front and the tripod below it is not included. It's that big red thing. I don't understand what, um, why? A... Uh, why is a good question. It, it's 12 megapixels. So it's not like you're getting more detail out of it. Not that those old large format lenses were like, especially sharp compared to modern day standards. I didn't get why the base ISO is 2100. Like, why couldn't they you would think it would have a lower base ISO yeah. based on the yeah. big, huge pixels, but whatever, it's probably a small company who rigged up something kind of cool. It looks cool. Nonetheless, I thought the images were cool out of it, and it would be super fun to play with, not $100,000 fun. 
I would be terrified seeing the way we've treated gear in the past if it was $100,000. Yeah, we break most loaner equipment. No. no we had things we have... like 10 times the size of the, the Hasselblad 1DX or whatever that is, X to 1D. Yeah. Yeah, I don't use small sensors like medium format. I'm only large format now. It's got to be eight by ten or larger. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, you a snob? I now. only do one by one prints. You are a snob. World Press Photo 2018 announced their winners, and there were some amazing photos on there. I don't want to show their photos for copyright reasons, <clears throat> but you can go to scp.io/wpp2018. Petapixel put together, uh, they kind of analyzed the brands of cameras that were being used. I thought it was interesting just to see what photojournalists were using now. And last year, Canon beat Nikon. This year, Nikon beat Canon. So it is still mostly these just kind of old brands. And I but think... By a lot. Yeah, it's weird that it swung so much. Uh, I do think of photojournalists in particular is using a lot of Nikon, like sports photographers seem to to gravitate towards Canon, but Nikon has this reputation going back to like Vietnam or I don't know, photojournalists seem to like Nikon for me. But mm -hmm. there were a handful of mirrorless cameras in, in there and even a DJI drone being okay. used. So just kind of the current state of the battle between camera Let's manufacturers. Something else. Let's look at some pictures. Let's look at some pictures. Well, internal Chris, camera. while we're looking for the pictures, do you have any questions or comments from the folks? Yeah, there home? are some some good ones. What advice can you give for creating a landscape image that also tells a good story? Um, well, I've seen landscape pictures of a curving road and then someone does a long exposure and you see the taillights of a car. So that could be part of a, a story if, you know, it makes it more of a journey. You're thinking about where the person is going. Mm -hmm. Um, you could see a landscape picture and there's a donkey carrying someone's stuff in the Grand Canyon or something like that. You can add another element. It can even just be adding a focal point in the foreground and showing scale suddenly or, I don't know, just diff different elements in the photo that another, give it context. Another, another good one in regards to processing, are there any types of photos that won't have a black and or a white point? Yeah, there are photos that are intentionally muted in processing, um, but they they look intentional. You can tell that they're supposed to look that way. Uh, if a photo just looks washed out and it's taking away from the subject, then in my mind that just means that the person didn't think to add the contrast to have a black and white point. But if it's supposed to have that matte look to it, then it might not have a white point and a black point, but it's still going to have some contrast. So... Yeah, the totally. First thing that yeah. popped in my mind was like a fog picture, uh, you know, where you see the fog rolling in. They're by nature very low contrast. Yeah, but even with those, Chris, I'll typically take the white of the fog and I'll bump it way up yep. just to add yep. some of that contrast. Otherwise, it just looks mushy. I think yep. people bring this up because we often try to provide guidance to beginners who rely totally on auto exposure yeah and cameras often will just underexpose shots and they or, or photos simply won't have enough contrast in them and they should go through and adjust the white and black point but then some people think we're saying that every single photo needs to have that applied and no if you're being deliberate by all means break all the rules well yeah there's always exception to the rules and once you know the rules breaking them is can become very interesting if you're doing it intelligently and purposefully yeah. but we're often just teaching the rudiments here that's true well, speaking of, here's a Clara's picture of Clara's birthday. And I noticed that it's missing a white point, even though there are parts of the photo that were overexposed. And this can happen if, if you're taking a JPEG picture and then you try to recover the exposure or you try to recover the highlights. Um, what will happen is everything will end up just gray and underexposed. So um, this is definitely the kind of situation where shooting raw could help you out, uh, but you can't really bring back highlights that have been completely blown out. I would just expose for her face since that's the subject. But in the context of, yeah, it's fine for the background to be blown out. There's no detail back there. In the context of storytelling, I think it's a uh, very cool shot. You got her face in there. Her family is there. You have the 100 in there, which is important. I wish the 100 were facing the other way. Um, maybe you could mirror the image and, and people might not notice. Sometimes it looks a little awkward, but uh, overall, I think you did a really good job. Yeah, I'm going to give that a pick because I think that's perfect storytelling. I like that a lot. Uh, Grand Canary Passage with a Canon PowerShot 80. 
Rich White, looking for a boat to South America. Well, you're not going to find it on the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah, I was just, well, they are in a marina there. Tony, don't ruin my joke. <laughs> okay, there's a story. They're looking for a boat. Yeah. They're eating some loaves of bread. Family bonds. Yeah, I think it's cute. I imagine they're looking at some fish or maybe feeding the fish. Uh, I like the overall scene that we have there. I think it's a good use of negative space, too. I think it's a good I shot. might actually even go 8 by 10 mm -hmm. and then crop in a little. Actually, I'm, I'm going to take the constraints off here just because I'm experimenting. But I love this framing that's going on. You see you have a path, and then you have them under this arching tree a little bit. Let's try to just bring it in a little. I like it a little bit closer. That's cute. Um, uh, someone's cleaning up. Yeah, I. It's not a super compelling story, right? You wouldn't read a novel like a guy just kind of brushing trash out of the gal. Alley. I would. I would. But it is. Trash. There is a focal point, at least. There is something to look at. Okay. Uh, Bocce in the park. <laughs> oh, but I think for this to be the proper story, we need to see what they're looking at because they're all looking off frame. And it's so, as a photographer, you're just like, well, I don't know what's going on. And I would not have even recognized those silver balls as bocce, bocce balls because, you know, I didn't grow up with bocce. I, I, I literally have no idea what's going on in the photo. So be sure to include. Have you ever played bocce? I think I have, but not enough that I would have recognized it. It just wasn't part of my childhood. I think it's an Italian thing, right? Mm. Um, a couple days after the Boston bombing. So you have all these belongings here as a tribute to the victims. And I, I think I, it's a good example of how storytelling could be used because looking at the photo, I don't know where it is or what has happened, especially with the the way it's been desaturated like i just it looks like a it looks like trash to me well you see boston strong here just uh, a little of it It would have been great if this whole thing were in the pick in the foreground yeah exactly they need something that tells me what's happening here and they need to make it prominent in the photo and uh right now it's just kind of missing so i know you were there and you know what's going on but me looking at it even having lived in boston i wasn't i didn't know this area or what was happening I do like that you got these emotions from these people here. So even if you don't know the exact story of the Boston bombing, I think you get a pretty good idea that it's a memorial and people at it are upset. Just a boy and his rooster. I think he's at a, a show and he's showing this rooster. Yeah, maybe the rooster won something, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, the story's not totally clear. Like, if you won, I'd love to see the blue ribbon. On the rooster? Yeah, I like this picture a lot. I, he, I love the I think it's a very cute picture. Proud expression. I love that the rooster just looks like he knows everything. I'm giving this one a pick. <laughs> okay. Jose Perez. Um, we have someone writing in a book or drawing. I, I think it's a cool shot. But again, it's from the con from the perspective of storytelling, I'm not sure what the story is. I do other like the other than person uses pencil. A riveting book by Tony Northrop. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're clearly at a playground, but I think the story here is about to happen. It's kid comes down slide. That's exciting. There's motion to it, or maybe I I don't know what's happening. But right now the story is just two kids standing at a playground and one kid on the first step. Ooh. Um, smoke is awesome. It's always awesome. Uh, it's more of like an environmental portrait to me. Yeah. Because I don't know why he's sitting there. Um, but I like the I like the smoke. I like that you accentuated the texture, maybe with the clarity slider. Great shot. There is this thing in the foreground, though. I don't know what that is. It's bugging me a little oh, bit. That's like the mirror on a car or something. Oh, yeah. yeah maybe they're on a scooter. Yeah. Oh. 
it's it's a cool shot. I love the vibrant colors. The water looks fantastic. I love the use of negative space too. Um, I guess there's some story. It's a story of her kind of it's relaxing, possibly floating out to sea. The last time we away. saw her. Yeah. Ooh. Whoa. I really like the long exposure here. Me uh, too. So I, like I, I do think this shows more story than we've been seeing. She's in an yeah. abandoned place. Uh, it it looks like a a business report that she was reviewing by candlelight. I don't know why that is. I maybe she's studying for her law exam or something. I'm not sure what's in the paperwork. It seems like an old book might have fit the theme a little bit better. Uh, but I really like it. I'm gonna give this one a pick. I yeah, like I love this the one use a lot of motion too. here. I love the use of motion and I love the colors. I just I just tweak them a little bit just to well, it's all a matter of taste anyway, but the storytelling is excellent. You gave it a pick, right? I did. So good. Um here well, here's the story. She's whittling something. What is this? A paddle? A, sp a spatula? A spoon? I don't know. So that might be part of it. Like part of the story is going to be she is whittling a and we can't quite see what that is. So you could get a little bit closer uh, and think about the background a little bit because there is kind of a cluttered background there that's a little bit distracting. Ah, chalk artist. Yeah, I like that. He seems to be just drawing himself. Kids these days and their selfies, man. <laughs> so narcissistic. Oh. Okay, I'll give that one a pick then. Okay, a time to see with a hint of color pop for Chelsea. That's not for me. Okay, so I like that you have two elements here, um, but I don't know the story. Yeah, I don't know what the story is either. I think it'd be more compelling if she were old and it were a story of time passing, um, but right now it just looks like a beautiful woman with a portrait with a clock in front of it. So I like it, yeah. but I don't know the story. Yeah, it's a cool photo, not necessarily on theme. Whoa. Um, and this is interesting. She's on a fire escape or something, and her she has some stuff on her face. Yeah. But I, I don't know what's happening. Is she looking for crimes to stop? I thought it kind of looked like that. Yeah. Well, once again, I mean, it's there's not a story that I can see. There's something a little discombobulating about this. Am I the only one? Um, discombobulating. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, just make fun of my choice of words. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Here we go. Great shot, Ashley. Pick, Ashley. Um, often with storytelling, you have to be a little more on the nose than you think. You have to really make sure something conveys. We learned this story, this this lesson in, in stock photography. You have to really sometimes be obvious about what you want. They just wrote anxiety, and it works perfectly. This image Heck. would sell as stock, or it could work as art. Yeah, it's awesome. It felt great, yeah. C City Tap House. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Ooh. There is definitely a story going on here, but I cannot relate. What is going on? You can't relate. This is exactly like when we go to Nana Lucy's house. His friend here is like a waiter with a towel over him, but they're just like force feeding him? Yep. Okay, I, it made me think. I'm going to give it a pick. It's almost like a Renaissance photo. Okay. This the sad little robot box. Good yeah. news. But what's he doing? I don't know. What's he? There doing? are so many cool things this guy could be doing, and it looks like he's doing his nails. <laughs> <laughs> I thought at first he was taking off his wedding ring, but he's not. He's just thinking. Um, I like I like the lighting, and I like this workshop a lot. Yeah, so he's repairing the engine on a 65 Chevy because he wants to give it to his dad or something like find what the story is and then find how to convey it. 
but right now it's a dude in a shop and that's cool. Um, same with this. It's a cool photo. She has a beautiful outfit, but we need a story here. Uh, there is, it seems like a protest or a march of some kind. Uh, okay. Love one blood Trump liar. I am not sure what love will find the way. I'm not sure what this is a protest for. I can tell it's a protest, but most of the image is negative space. So what I would do is just get closer, find a sign that conveys what's going on and make that prominent. Show the emotions that people are experiencing, what they feel, uh, but make it clear so that somebody who doesn't know the photo can look at it and know what was happening at the time. I can tell where it's happening. It's happening somewhere in the US. All in the past. I also think this is a cool photo. All in the past didn't convey to me, but it's cool. Yeah, I think that's a very cool picture. <laughs> <laughs> this one made us laugh. I think the expression of the woman behind her, she kind of looks at her handiwork and the expression of the kid, like, I'm unsure about this. I think that's really cute. I'm going to give that one a pick. I think that's a really nice moment. We can tell that she was just doing her hair. They're probably getting ready for a fancy event. And the kid doesn't want to have fancy hair for Easter. Chelsea's giving you a little selective dodging and burning here, increasing the contrast a little bit. I, I just want to bring, bring up the side by side so I can see what kind of changes you made. Chris has an old timey telephone call. <laughs> uh, that's a lawyer. <laughs> So I'm just putting the radial filter on her and then dropping the exposure in the rest of the picture just to make her stand out a little bit more. And there you go. Good shot, Jeffrey. Did we give that a pick? Uh, yeah, I gave it a pick. Okay. Okay. Amanda, dude selling hats at the beach. Oh, I don't like Bruce when Preston. people sell stuff at the beach. I don't either. I just want to relax at the beach, not get sold stuff at the beach. <laughs> this guy likes it. He needed a hat. That guy's got too many hats, so it's perfect. <laughs> what are the odds? Look, she feels the same way I do. She's like, selling at the beach. Go away. Ooh. Oh, Kyle Wolf. Oh, Kyle Wolf. I love the toning in this. Look at those really nice greens and blues. Yeah, it's a beautiful shot. You get some storytelling here. Look at those. Wow. Yeah, I. It sure looks Machu Picchu-ish, but it doesn't look like Machu Picchu to me. Well, it's in Peru. I think, but I think it is. I th yeah, I'm pretty sure. See the women. There. Yeah. I like this one. I feel like she got to use the tablet and it was supposed to be his turn and mom said but sarah always gets her way um i think we the white balance here was a little messed up yeah that's an easy way to fix it it's just to go black and white otherwise because she is her face is being illuminated by that tablet I think it's coming a in as a really story. weird color so i think but he's looking at a tv i think because look at his eyes they're like straight up purple um but yeah i guess the weird colors do give you a sense for the environment. Yeah, the colors are really hard to balance. Good shot, George. <laughs> Cheryl, this is it's, so cute. It's really adorable. I don't know what the story is. Like, they're not, it's not baby escapes lion. It's babies are so cute. That's the story. Um, Photographers lined up for sunset. I think I'm going to... The thing is, you had you have it down to show the colors, but I'm getting like weird fringy stuff around people. Yeah, yeah. Just watch the the processing. Use uh, like brushes with big feathered uh, selections, so it kind of blends in smoothly. Oh, do you have any questions or comments for us, Chris? Sure do. Tony, for uh. An A7 III, Sony A7 III, recommendation on a good landscape lens. Um, I mean, they don't have too many to choose from, but in Sony. Yeah, you know, what we've been doing is 
using the Metabones adapter and the Canon 24 to 70. I know when most people say landscape lens, they really mean that they want like a 16 to 35. Uh, yeah. We have tested the Sony 16 to 35 F28, but I have not yet gone through the results. So I'm sorry, I don't have that ready. Um, we've used their F4 wide angle lens and it's, it's good. Um, and so I don't know, you know, my main lens would probably be on that camera would probably be the Sony 24 to 105 F4. It's a good all around lens. It's not going to blow you away, but at that price point, it's a good solid lens. And it's probably like the one lens that will do most of the landscape stuff you need. If you need wider, I would stitch together a panorama. Is that the one that's, uh, not the full frame lens? No, the it's 24 to 105 one. is full frame. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's pretty new. You're thinking of like the 18 to 105, I yeah, think? Yeah, yeah. Anything else, Chris? Yeah, have you ever used flash in, in wildlife photography? I have, but not with great results. Uh, first, I think you, the eye immediately notices that the, the lighting is artificial and uh, the flash means you get one shot because the flash always disturbs the animal. Yeah. But I have seen photographers use it to great effect because you don't always get to control the light and maybe you just need some additional front lighting and mm -hmm. it's nice to have it right on camera. Um, I've also been talking about setting up a little studio for birds where I put like off camera flash with big soft boxes and stuff and try to lure them in. I'm nervous. Something else to try. I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah. This picture, I like this picture a lot. I like the Dutch till. Um, it's... It's a, it's a little bit strange because like the kid is cut off at the neck, so that's awkward, but it works because the whole picture is kind of weird and awkward. The one thing that I'm not fond of is that um, grandma is pointing at something and we don't know what it is. And the little girl's looking at it and we still can't see it. But I don't know, that almost kind of adds to the strangeness of the photo. So, Yeah, to me that was a key part of the story that was missing. I don't know what the story is. I don't know what they're doing. Look at this little beach bum. Yeah, maybe at the beach of the boogie board. Um, I like the real low angle. Me too. Yeah, I like the, the low the angle on it too. Now. Yeah, nice shot. I would get rid of the center composition though. Yeah, and I, th I think, you know, part of the story might be what she does with it, and maybe this is all she did with it. Um, I would also like to see, right now, the her head, the most important part is is kind of uh, surrounded by the boogie board, which is a very complex object with that complex pattern on it. So if she were holding it out to the side or facing a different way, the overall separate subject separation would be a lot stronger. Yeah, I think that they also dropped the blues in the sky and that, that's why the sky partially looks so busy. Yeah, we have some fringing on there too. But very cool. Well, I don't get invited to these kinds of parties, and I'm jealous. I've never seen this either. This guy's got, like, WD-40 going. <laughs> yeah, the blade gets really yep. hot when you saw stuff. Oh, that is that because it gets stuck when you saw things? Yeah, yep. Tony, have you ever sawed things? Yeah, oh, I've definitely sawed stuff, and it definitely gets stuck. Uh, I It never occurred to me to put WD-40 on it. I just kept sawing and got mad at how hard it was. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, this kid's expression. Yeah, to me, the main story is these three people. And I, I would have just gotten closer. Like, ask yourself, is this guy a I key like that part guy. of the story? He's got a beer. <laughs> no, I hate that guy. No, I'm fighting you. I'm cropping him out. Uh, oh, man, you didn't lock it down. Okay. Uh -huh. So I, I, anyway, I would get in really tight and ask yourself what the key components of this story are and it's probably like this whoa tony's please no that tells the same story but much simpler no it doesn't you need these people in the background look at the this guy's there face at the picnic table look at the intensity in his legs look at his pose okay well that's still a pretty heavy crop I'm glad we agree on this. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Jackson, a boy walking his dogs. What a good story. Yeah, it's it's a really cute photo. And yeah, I think it, it works as a pretty good story. He is out for a walk with his dogs. He's doing something. We can see what he's up to. I'll give you a pick. Oh, I, 
I thought... Okay. Ooh, a walk in the woods. The light on this is just gorgeous, right? Yeah, really right? beautiful light. Yeah. I'll give that a pick. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give this one a pick, too. Because the story here is immediately obvious. He is trying to satisfy the baby. He's giving the baby his finger. And thus, he's being removed from having fun at this party. We've all kind of been there where you have to host, or you have to take care of a kid or something. And somebody is there helping him out. The hero of the party. She's there holding his Guinness. You get a pick at, I think it's an awesome shot and a fantastic story. Yeah, pick. And I just brighten their skin tones a bit. Yeah, good call. He's getting a pony ride. I Am I a cowboy now, Mom? That's really cute. Oh, he's got the coolest shirt. That's cute. Very close, but I don't know the story. This Whoa. is really interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think she's taking a shower. But you got to use makeup remover before the shower. <laughs> yeah, photography tips and... Just hygiene tips <laughs> every I, Thursday at five. I like it. It's so different from anything we've ever seen. Yeah. You're assuming that that's lipstick. Yeah. What, uh, Popsicle. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give it a pick just because it was really interesting. I wasn't quite sure what the story is, but I don't believe him. She does look suspicious. I, I'm on her side. <laughs> oh, this is a sassy story. Yeah, that's a pretty cool shot. Uh, he is wearing a pretty cool shirt, too. It's all lacy. Yeah, he's a sensual man. Nice light on that. Uh, he's... I, I don't know the story here. <laughs> he's got a helmet and a backpack, and they're at the police department, and there's a hydrant. It's a nice picture. Bummer town. Pictures of art. So somebody already told the story with the art. Oh, bummer town. Okay. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. That's that's beautiful. That is pretty. Do you want to do chit chat, Chelsea? Let's do some chit chat. Okay. Aww. Let's do chit chat. Dog. Oh. <gasps> Whoa. That one's pretty cool. She's being raptured. <laughs> nice one, Troy. Oh. You get a pick, Troy. Good one. Uh, chit, chit chat. chat. It's the part of the show where we read your comments that we either really like or really hate. Let's go. <laughs> Michael Miller says, I find your camera history is very interesting. Great idea. Must have been Chelsea. Ooh. Michael, you're smart, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite kind of compliment, actually, where it starts out a compliment and they lead you down a little bit and then 180. Bam. Bam. Take it back. Make you feel dumb. Guile says, wow, what a shitty show you guys have. <laughs> and Tony said, be nicer to people. We're all just doing our best. So he deleted that comment. And four minutes later, he said, you guys have a nice show, even though I'm unable to enjoy it. And Tony said, you're getting closer. <laughs> I think his next comment was explicit. Uh, yeah, he said that he was getting nicer, but he wasn't going to go too far with that niceness but in a sexually explicit way <laughs> yeah <clears throat> i just wanted to point out that people tell me never to talk to the trolls but often it, the trolls don't realize that somebody's actually like there's a human being on the other end they think they're just like yelling at their tv like armchair quarterbacking almost but on it's not like tv like youtube people see everything you write for the most part i mean every some people won't look anymore because they've been so traumatized by their comments and I, a lot of people have told me that they were gonna start a youtube channel but they are afraid of the comments or something yeah so like nobody's gonna hurt my feelings because i don't have any left but other people will see those and will not make free content for you guys so everybody should just be nice and if I, people are mean you should tell them like there's real people there. Like, be nice. Yeah, but people, some people are just weird. Like, have you ever just been out in public and there's some person that's not quite right and they yell something at you? Like, <laughs> you smell like garbage. And you don't take it personally. Like every day. Because you're like, oh, there, you're, there's something not right. So this he isn't about me. doesn't appreciate my cologne. That happens. <laughs> that happens online. But you can't see that they're weird. Okay, Dumandua girl says, no, I was going to name my next 
pet pixel. You've ruined it for me. Well, you know what? You gotta be a little faster to beat the Northrups. Matt Granger was also going to name his cat Pixel, and he texted me, and he was like, I just named my cat Pixel, and now I can't because everyone's going to say I copied you. I was like, I don't care. But he could. totally could. Everybody has a cameraman named Eckert. Everybody has a pet named Pixel. This can just be the new thing that we all do. It's we, like Jennifer in the 80s. We'll just all start naming everything Pixel. Yeah, who cares? It's a great name. Stuart Green says, as a Londoner, South London, the proper side of the oh. river, Tony and Chelsea definitely don't look alike. There's no way that I would get on the job with Tony. We all learned what that means. That's a callback. Oh, yeah. What does it mean? <laughs> Do you not remember? <laughs> I was just teasing you. I just wanted you to say it. I had a feeling. Okay, we have a 10% off coupon. Oh, yeah, this episode is brought to you by us, Northrop.photo. So go to sdp.io slash store. You can get 10% off any physical purchase, and then we'll sign it. We don't usually do that. Well, we do it when we release something new, and we did it for the Puerto Rico fundraiser. So it's rare. Sometimes people ask. I don't know. You guys should get it. All right. SD Worldwide Shipping, sdp.io slash store. So let's go back to this lady that was raptured. Oh, yeah. Uh, we gave Troy a pick. I thought it was cool. Yeah, it's cool. I told a story. Hiking boy. Really nice. Uh, They're rushing to catch the train. Yeah. Late for the train. I get that. I, I like that you have a little bit of motion in there. Uh, I think we'd want to see a little more of the story, like maybe get closer to the people. You know, you could, Ooh. you know, a train's going to leave. You could wait by the door and wait for people to come rushing up. Oh. Um, this is cool. Story. <gasps> Blood on the sword. Yeah, this is awesome. It's a beautiful scene. I love the use of negative space here. I'd love to see it as a big print that yeah. could work. Ooh. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. This is so much better than just taking a picture out the window, right? Yeah. Pick. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, well... All we can see is the guy's phone. So we, our instinct was actually to try to look at his phone to see what he's looking at because everything else is so out of focus. What, what is happening? It's like one of those big parade China things, like with the snake that's purple. Chinese like New Year? The eyes blink. I think so. Oh. Something like that. I was just confused because people had headphones on. Day in the life, life of a dressmaker. Oh, okay. Yeah, this Good is show. a cool story. Yeah, that's a very wow. cool story. She's got mannequins going there. You get a pick. I relate Great to shot, this Dave. phase of the creative process <laughs> when you just give up and lay on the floor. Yeah, that's a really awesome story. You, you nailed that, Dave. Everyone can learn from you, Dave. You're a hero, Dave. Okay, got so here's fish. an eagle with a fish and another one that wants to take it. I think we can all relate to that, too. They're aggressive. We've both, we've been each of those at some point in our lives. Cool. Hey, look over there. I will. Um, I would just say you want to go for a little more subject separation. So if you could have crouched down a little bit and maybe gotten her pointing arm against the brighter part of the sky, she would have stood out a little bit more. What? This is great. Oh, that's super cute. The Azores. I want to go there, Tony. Let's go. Yeah, that looks amazing. I love the color contrast here. Everything's green and gray except for his bright yellow pants. Yeah, I even like <gasps> it kind of zoomed in like that, a too. Wolf. So cool. Great shot. Uh -huh. Oh, that's nice little cute. pregnancy shot. They're having a baby. Yeah, I think it tells us nice little... We know what's going on. We know a little bit about their personality. They like the converse. Um... There is a cannon here, but it's not looking at anything. Like, there's nothing in unfolding. What are they doing? Uh, they're... They're learning? That's kind of what the picture's supposed to tell us. But, yeah, I, I get the impression they're in, like, an outdoor zoo or something. But, yeah, the story isn't very clear. Ooh. Well, that's a really cool shot. I love her style. Yeah. The story... To me, is just that there's a photo shoot. Look at that chromatic aberration. Dear Lord. Let's get rid of that for you. 
There you go. Whew. Oh, it's still there. What lens are you using? Uh, the 50 millimeter F1.8. Whoa. Yeah, it is pretty rough for chromatic aberration. You can do, you could use the adjustment brush. There's the defringe setting in there and you could manually remove it without messing up the rest of the picture too bad. Uh, if it bothered Chelsea, I think the shot's very cool. I think you did a, a good job with it. Um, I guess the story is the wind caught her umbrella and she's being blown away. That happens. As it does. I'm give it a pick. Yeah, it's a good shot. Ooh, I love this. Grandma watches her great grandson. I don't know what she's looking at. That part of the story doesn't convey, but I do like the story of sort of using modern technology to to share imagery with, you know, your great grandparent. I love kind of the thing. depth of field. I get a sense that we're in her kitchen and it's an airy space and I love her expression. Definitely a pick. Yeah. Excellent. Um, come fly with me. So to me, this just looks like she's posing with the plane, but it's still cool. Yeah, I think it's a cool portrait. It's like an environmental portrait. But would, she doesn't look like she's a, the pilot, like she's not wearing a flight suit or anything. I'm not sure what the story is. Yeah. But it's, it's a cool portrait. Yes. I would just, unless she's just very naturally smooth, but it looks like a little over smoothing on the face to me. So I would just dial that back a little bit. But it's very nice. Sorry. When I see a picture I like, I just want to play with it. Ooh, playing guitar. Yeah, nice. it's a nice candid shot. Okay, he's welding. It's interesting. Brighton Pier. That's beautiful. I like that. They're going to go swimming at the Brighton Pier. I'm giving that a pick. Oh my gosh, you guys. He's catching a tree, says the title, but we don't see the tree. No, but it's a good picture. Okay. Um, it's a pretty good sports story. I wish we could see the ball. I mean, I know it's there. It looks like he scored, but I don't see the goal line. <laughs> That's cute. I don't know what's happening. Just kids are always just stepping and stuff deliberately. <laughs> King Tut. Okay. The King Tut exhibit. That's cool. Whoa. This is awesome. Yeah, that's a great shot. Mac attack. I like that they just straight up drew on the picture. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. really creative. I love all of the movement, and I love that the extreme colors match that movement. Very cool. Reminds me of T-Car a little bit. Yeah. It's a really cute moment. We see right away she's helping the kid out with blowing some bubbles. Yeah, we'll give this one a pick. What a nice moment to capture. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. <laughs> yeah, I like this one a lot. Uh, the ears here really help tell the story. And they frame your subject. Yeah, you, you get a pick for this one. Definitely. We've seen a lot of kind of animal shots, but this one clearly simply tells a story. I love that picture. That might be my favorite one. <laughs> it's so different. Yeah. That's okay. really cute, all the different footprints. Yeah, well, they're telling a story of a cat catching a bird. You see the little bird footsteps here and then the cat. <laughs> Though I don't see a struggle, so maybe it was just two different. I thought they just crossed paths. Yeah, maybe they just crossed paths. Happiness begins with you. Oh, and then he looks sad. Oh. <laughs> Easier said than done by Nate Brav. Okay, I give you a pick. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, why are you laughing? <laughs> He loves sad people. Just as yeah, it was up. just, I don't know, it just hit me in a funny way. <laughs> the juxtaposition, okay. you know? Yeah, you get a pick. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> we know how to get Justin now. Just just cry. Just despair. <laughs> He's secretly evil. <laughs> it's like Madeline, I was doing a photo shoot with her today, and her best friend is her cousin Maya, and I was like, imagine Maya applied to college, and she didn't get in. And Madeline just starts laughing hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're evil. <laughs> Bank lady, give me another cookie. Man, but we need to see the lady holding the cookie. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually why I think storytelling is so important because um, people don't get it naturally. Because no, when, we, 
when you took the picture, you could see the dog and the cookie and you knew what was going on, but then you show the picture to other people and they can't piece it together. So you have to find a way to zero out your brain and forget everything you know about the scene and see it from the viewer's perspective. Yeah, you even said, give me another cookie, which means you saw them give the first one. But we don't know that. We weren't there. We don't know what happened. You have to show us. Yeah. And here the main subject is in the foreground here, but they're so blurred out and so dark that I, I couldn't even make out what that shape was. Is that Legolas? Is that his name? I don't watch Lord of the Rings. Oh, I don't know. <gasps> oh. It's really but cute. But I do like that he used the real match and the action figures. That's really cool. Yeah. It's a beautiful portrait. It says lost, but I'm not sure. Are they both lost? Yeah, I don't pickle? know. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's cool. All right, that's a great portrait. It was thoughtful. They have some motion in there. Nice shot. <laughs> okay. I okay, guess I know. This is, we definitely know what's happening in this protest. <laughs> Earlier we had a shot where we were like, I don't know what this protest is for. Is he actually for. wearing money? That guy is a baller. <laughs> What's this hat say? <laughs> Make America what again? I don't good know. Good again. What is it? Good? That's what it looked like. Yeah. Wow. Make America good again. This is a story. I'm going to give it a pick because there, there's just so much passion right now. And you told a part of that story. Love his socks, too. Black um, vultures. Yeah, what's weird is the hawk that's just right in there. Wow, this is beautiful. Oh, they picture. have turkey vultures and black vultures. Three so types of scavengers eat a crow. A crow. Yeah, that's interesting. I think we actually need to see a little more of the prey to make it convey. Though I guess you see, I see a the rib ribs. bones yeah. out there. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, cool shot. I'm gonna give this a pick. That's beautiful. Okay. What's going on? There's there's so much story going on in the reflection. Yeah, I think that's the whole story. It's kind of neat. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I think that's a cool way to tell a story of a little picnic. I'll give you a pick because it's so creative. Good job, Morton. Oh my gosh. You strangle him. <laughs> that's a nice portrait, yeah, but there's a no portrait. story. <laughs> she looks like she's pleading with him. This is very sweet, but I don't know the story. Maybe it's a no, wedding. We can't leave without taking Whoa, those cookies. Whoa, this is awesome. Yeah, that is a great couple shot. I, it's, okay, I'm gonna give it a pick. Of course, I this don't is know. great. I was just wondering about the story aspect of it, but I love the picture. Great shot, Veggie. That's <laughs> the biggest joint I've ever seen. And you captured it, Andy. Holy moly. I'll give it a pick. I that that needs to go in the history books, I believe. Yeah, that seems like it might be a bit much, though. No, she's sharing. <laughs> Look at all those people. The she's story. The whole town. <laughs> is this two people or one person superimposed in? So maybe she's talking on the phone at a hotel with her friend. <clears throat> I guess so. Don't lose your head, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is interesting. Yeah, this Bedspread is spread bereavement. Definitely wow. interesting. The uh, it is blowing my mind a little bit just to take it in. We have what looks like it, it reads like water at the bottom even though it's some sort of fabric. It looks like he's fighting a storm somehow. Yeah. Uh it's definitely compelling and interesting. Really cool. All right, I'll give you a pick, Nathan. You definitely made me like think about it. The only thing that I would change is I would just take the logos off of the umbrella. Yeah. So cool, what a cool idea. Checking out the view. What's oh. the story? He's checking his phone and he's hot. <laughs> Whoa. That's an awesome selfie. Very cool. We'll give you a pick. I mean, yeah, you went through all that planes. trouble. <laughs> Have any more cool questions or comments, Chris? I guess I can do another. Yeah. How often are you inspired by non-visual sources, stories, poems, history, etc.? I 
work creatively by being inspired by a lot of ideas or things that I hear people say or things that have happened to me. So if you follow me on Instagram, at Chelsea underscore Northrup, um, I just put up a picture of me blowing a bubble and then you see all these hands coming in to pop it. And that was an idea I had when I put up another picture and everyone just had something negative to say. And I was just thinking of the creative process. Like when you're a creator, you have to be willing to put something out there that's gonna get torn apart. That's just a part of it. People are lined up to do it and you have to be vulnerable. Um, and so a lot of my ideas are inspired just by a thought, a feeling. How about you, Tony? I just wanna say you're cool. Really? Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, I want to give this guy a pick because this tells a story like it could have easily looked like a guy just kayaking, but the the flooded gulf in the back tells a story. Probably got the it does. Wrong. Any other questions or comments, Chris? <laughs> uh, <laughs> this would be me at the party just looking at the cookies <laughs> like, is anyone else going to have these? <laughs> should I or shouldn't I? Should I or shouldn't I? <laughs> Do you, there's a question here, and I've seen this a couple times. The the links that you have on for am, the Amazon links that you have, yeah. are they only for U.S. Amazon, or is there a way to convert those links to Australia they, or Japan or India? They should or redirect to any place that has Amazon. Yeah, they should redirect to your country. Yeah. Okay. First, they we direct you to a page to tell you that you're going to Amazon, so that you know. And then it should direct you to your country. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Anything else, Chris? What? Uh, and again, we've had this this person ask questions before because of the way they put it. Uh, Chakshu says, "Question for Ma'am and Sir: the highest level of honor that they have ever gotten." The highest level level of honor that I've ever gotten. Yeah. Tony just called me cool. <laughs> that guy just called me sir. I'm pretty honored. Ma'am and sir. I guess it all happened for us tonight. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, off the top of my head, I don't. You got sexiest geek in America. Geek oh my in America, God, that's yeah. a good point. Sexiest geek alive. Oh, sexiest geek alive. Alive. Yeah, they wanted to rule out like. Dead Edison people. And, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. I like this picture. Um, these guys are kissing in a car and this guy is looking. Mind your own business, orange shirt. Also, they just got into a car accident, probably because they're always kissing and driving. Got to be safe. Yeah, if he's parked, he's nowhere near the curb. This has been a terrible job of parallel parking. I give it a pick just because we, we really analyzed what was going on. <laughs> oh, you're going to get tagged. The rundown. And look at the coach. He's like, shouldn't have tried <laughs> oh, to steal. Shouldn't have yeah, tried to steal. You're right. I like oh, the title is The Coach Knows. Yeah. Oh, man. Good shot. Ooh. Wow. I'm giving this a pick. Yeah, that's a beautiful shot. Great shot, Keith. I don't. Charminar. Charminar. What's this? I don't know what they're looking at or talking about. I don't know. Justin, can you look up what Charminar is real quick? Sure. Because this guy's watching. Is is he holding? He's holding up a little music box to his ear, I guess. It's a monument and mosque that was uh, constructed in 1591 in Tanglangana, India. Oh. I think because here we have some sort of music device. I think he's got a tiny little music box and he's letting him listen to it. It's because this is a beautiful picture. Yeah. Not a great story. That I, I like this geometry on this photo. Yeah. But again, it's just like a guy sitting there. Filling the balloon. Ooh, uh, that's a cool picture. Oh. <laughs> that's really oh, cute. I hope our new dog likes adventure. I hope so too. Sandy doesn't. She's afraid of life. <laughs> Um, this is cute. I like that she's laughing at, I think, what is her brother? I don't know. Let's see. Let's put a little contrast in there. Playing the guitar. Some fellas playing rugby. we got to be careful with the colors here. See how green his face is? Oh, yeah. What happened to the colors? 
I think it's just picking it up from the grass. Oh, old grass face. Oh boy, he's got. The, when you've got your hands on your hips, <laughs> it's serious. <laughs> That'll buff out. Yeah, just stick that back on. Wow. <laughs> Um, hey. But I don't know what they're looking at. Me either. Aw. <laughs> I like this picture a lot. He's feeding his friend here. I'm going to give him a pick. It's a beautiful lighting. Whoa. A crowded train. I think that tells the story well. Yeah. Simplifying that's it. That's a cool shot. I like the composition. Yes. Every time I try <laughs> okay, to eat in nature, cute. the seagulls find me. I, I wish we composed it a little differently since he's so close at the top and there's so much grass down below, but I do like the story. <laughs> Chelsea can fix that. You like the story? This poor man is about to be assaulted. Look at <laughs> look at their uncaring eyes. Why do they look like they got cloned in Photoshop? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and these ones are talking. He's like, we're going to steal it, right? Of course we're going to steal it. Be patient. Ready, set, go. <laughs> that is so cute. I'll give it a pick. Oh, don't sit up fast. But, that guy beat the system. He figured out how to sleep on look, those things. His phone fell through. Yeah, it was hanging in there, but it fell off. Does he have a hangover? This guy is doing that thing where he's trying to sit as far away as possible with his body language. Like, he's completely <laughs> tilting this way. I'm giving this a pick. I like that this person just took a picture. I, I want to come over and just clap loudly so the guy wakes up suddenly and just bangs his head against that thing. <laughs> you're Bam. evil. And then I'll steal this phone. <laughs> wow, you're a terrible man. You and Justin. Justin laughed at that man's sadness. You're a thief. <laughs> it's, it's evil Thursday. I don't know what they're looking at. Yeah, the outfits and colors are beautiful. Yeah. It's at, they're at the camel fair, so maybe they're excited about camels. Ooh, I like the light here. <laughs> That's cute. Look oh, at, look but at their little But we got to see their expressions, right? Isn't well, that the story? Their little body language is like they really want her to open. Oh, fireman. That's really cute. Oh, well, I don't know the story at all. I know there's a man in front of a window... Oh, things got really interesting when I did that. Let's keep moving. Wow. This is a gorgeous shot. It is a picture of a guy taking a picture of a lighthouse, but the color and everything is so fantastic. I, I think I got to give it a pick. It is fantastic. He gave up on his tripod. I don't know what their story is. Are they just playing? Wow. So we're, oh, we're, wow. That's... Yeah. <laughs> Celebrating. I like this. I'm giving this a pick. Yeah, that's cute. Hopefully that's not high school. <laughs> Maybe it's just juice. Hot chicks graduating college <laughs> celebrating. <laughs> Mike. They all coordinated their shoes, too. They're pretty fancy. Those are their college graduates, Chelsea. They're capable people. I'm sorry. I <laughs> never thought to do that. Chris, before we get out of here, you have any final questions for us? Yeah, there's a there's a paid question, a hundred uh, Danish krona, which is like seventeen dollars. Dang, thanks. Uh, from and I, I I'm gonna butcher the guy's name. I apologize. Askadar. He says he pronounce his name like the guy from Pokemon, but I don't know. This, <laughs> he this doesn't help. <laughs> I know. Soon I'm going to Africa for the first time. What lenses should I bring? I've got a D six ten. Well, what do you, which part of Africa and what are you photographing? Yeah, we don't have nearly enough information. Like we just went to Morocco safari? and all I needed was a 24 to 70. Mm. But yeah, if you're safariing, then you probably want oh, like a 100 to 400 as well as the biggest lens you have, like a big prime. Because sometimes they'll get up close and sometimes they'll be far away. Yeah. Thanks okay. for the corona. Okay, guys. We looked at a lot of pictures. We didn't make it through all of them, but you had great photos this week. Thanks, Chris and Justin, for joining us. Again, if you want to get something signed by us and get 10% off, you can go to sdp.io slash store and use the coupon code SIGNED, all lowercase, and we'll try to sign it for you.
We'll definitely sign it for you. Well, I'm just saying, it, on a t-shirt, it might not look beautiful. Yeah, we'll do a but it will poor be job unique. signing it for you. It will be unique. <laughs> okay. See you all next week when our theme is street photography. All right, next Thursday, guys. Bye. Bye. It's t -gar. That is all. That is all. Huh. Thank you, guys.